Okay, how about this? We have some very exclusive sneakers right here. Uh, these these were Michael Jordan game worn Air Jordan One, uh, and they were dubbed as the Broken Foot Game pair, and they sold for close to half a million dollars. The basketball shoe is tied to one of the most crucial moments of the six-time NBA champion's professional career. Back in 1985, MJ faced his first major injury during a winning game against the Golden State Warriors when he fractured a bone in his left foot, which prevented him from playing for six months. During his recovery, the Bulls, who initially held the 3-0 record, soon fell to 24-43. and No MJ, no win, no win. These were sealed with the code 850102-TYPS. That code obviously has a, the 85 in there for the date and the game and whatever else. Um, so they were found to be produced within the January, February 1985 and appear to be worn, wor well worn throughout the scuffs. Well, look, I mean, they, they've definitely been worn. This is a, a, must be a very difficult thing to authenticate, right? You would assume. Like, it would have to get passed from him at that moment to a reliable individual yeah. who could sign off and then keep that pair associated, and it would need to be handled by people the whole way along who knew that that's what it was. Or you'd have to be such an expert. Or do you get into trying to date the thing some other means scientifically? But I guess Nike would be the one. If Nike could authenticate it, that, mm -hmm. hey, that uh, number, whatever code is associated, it was only on that sneaker provided for that game, then it's all very interesting. But I see the top comment here is, who the F would want an NFT of this instead of the real thing? And how would an NFT of this be worth more for anyone? I'm all about NFTs, but for something like this, come on, give me the physical piece of history right there. Yeah. Vin I, I agree. Although I feel like um, NFT would be a good use for it. Like using NFT blockchain technology to kind of tag once these shoes are out of the factory, it could be tagged oh, you yeah. know, in well, the blockchain and then no, I, you can I, kind I, of trace where it came from. A better way to authenticate. Yeah, not a digital version of, the N, uh, I know of these shoes. I know you know what, what I mean? Yeah, 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 you're talking about an authenticator, which, yeah. which is a cool idea, but I think really what this guy is saying is i think in a roundabout way he's saying i'm i'm looking at nfts going for hundreds of thousands of dollars yeah, yeah. which is an ape and whatever else i mean i'm not picking on anyone specifically but wherever people uh designate value and then he's saying like look at this this is there will never be an, yeah. uh, anything there's nothing close to this and it's 422,000 like there's a, in a weird there's a weird way of looking at this as a deal mhm mm Compared to what's going on in an NFT marketplace, but but it's so hard to compare the two because it's not obvious that both parties are interested in the same thing. It's not obvious. And is it because it's physical? The only mere fact that it's physical, well, what I it would adds say, value. Well, what I would say about physical collectibles like this one is the one thing they don't have going for them is liquidity. It's 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 a little more difficult to turn around and sell it. You got to find the right buyer. Often you have to have an auction. You got to go look for a Sotheby's type. And so I guess you have to get this insured too, right? Because, it, right? Sealed. It can physically get more damaged. Yeah. You have to have a way of displaying it or protecting it. Yeah, you're correct. So it's, there is a little bit more to it, but I have to agree with that commenter. At least in the case of this, that is a serious collectible. But even myself, I'm, I'm, I don't even know where to put it what to do with it I, I i suck with possessions and things like i don't even know how to properly display it i almost want, want more people to enjoy it than myself like as yeah. like and, I, and this is why these types of sports hall of fames exist and museums and such maybe if i had a really sick like memorabilia room or something Sure. I could put it there, but uh, anyway, 422000 is no joke for a pair of sneakers, but they, when you think of the most expensive sneakers that are out there, this has got to be up there now. I, I, may, maybe the pair of shoes he hits a game uh, championship winning shot or something mm -hmm. might, might be, but this one, he broke his foot in it. That might even be cooler. I don't know. 
I don't know. Depends on the collector, I guess. It's very cool anyway. But you see, you even here, it had to come through an auction. Leland's auctions. And yeah, experts get, get spoofed sometimes. Uh, Vin's a big fan of the Pawn Stars. And there, there's clips on YouTube with like 13 million views where they get screwed. They think something's authentic, it's not. Well, or the they, latest was the, Lo the Logan Paul Pokemon thing, right? <clears throat> the Logan Paul Pokemon was another example. But yeah. in that case, it's a little tougher because the authenticators didn't even look inside the box. Yeah, they didn't know. They, they took all that heat because they couldn't crack the seal on the cardboard exterior box. They would have known right away had they gotten in past that. G.I. Joe. 